haven't completed class 1, let's now click on class 2. Sources of the law. And we will use Chinese, Nigerian, criminal, and the We will cover a total of four sub topics, an overview of the source, one law and rules of trade in general, part of the one law and rules of trade in general, cost in the general, and finally, there will be a different assignment involving a trade in the law and rules of trade in general, cost in Nigeria. Let's take on the first part. The overview of the three types of sources. The rules are along the particular depending on the following factors. The first factor is the type of court. Is it a magistrate court? Is it a state court? Is it a federal high court? Is it a court of appeal? The second factor is whether or not the state has been instituted in the ACJ as short term and the Institute of Human Rights is not. And if it has not, then whether the state is in northern Nigeria or southern Nigeria. The third factor is whether or not the appeal exists in the law applicable to a particular jurisdiction. And the express provisions of the law for such circumstances. With that at the back of your mind, let's now take a look at the sources. The high level of the of the three sources that you will be considering. You can see them shown on the screen. Principal sources, secondary sources, and then at the same sources. Let's take the first principal source, the ACGA. ACGA is short for Administration and Criminal Justice Act. Before the interview, ACJA came into force. The major procedural criminal of Nigeria is contained via the Criminal Procedure Act CPC or the Criminal Procedure Code CPC. The legislation enforced in Nigeria determines whether Nigerians keep the law of Nigeria's law in the south of the region. For northern Nigerian states, the CPC applies to the south. For southern Nigerian states, the CPC remains to the south. The principal statute applicable to the high court of the FCC, all other federal courts, and any state high court that tries to prevent a crime, is the ACGA. Please refer to section 2, subsection 1 of the ACGA. The next principal source is the Administration of Criminal Justice Law, ACGA. If a state domesticates the ACGA, it becomes known as the ACGA. A total of 24 states out of Nigeria's 36 states are bound as They include a number of states, Cross River State, Carousel State, Deputy State, Enugu State, Kogi, Lagos State, Ndo State, and your state, Kaduna, River State, and Kwaibun State, and those states, and Kwan State, Plateau State, and Sun State, Kwan State, Damaha State, and Elsa State, 
notables and those obvious things, famous things, and national things. Our third sex is the criminal procedure called law. The history of the criminal procedure called Northern Nigeria and the trade in the then Chief Justice of Nigeria, H. C. Boland's criminal procedure proclamation in 1903, which was based on the Gold Coast Criminal Procedure Ordinance of 1876. Following the amalgamation of Northern and Southern Nigeria, Governor General Wapitana sought to retire the criminal procedure laws of two regions. Through a consolidated ordinance known as the Nigerian Criminal Procedure of the Ninth of the So, for a period of time, all of Nigeria had one criminal procedure law. And then, subsequently, the Criminal Procedure Code was passed into the law by the Northern Regional Government in 1960. Northern state labor jurisdictions of the end have CPCL to show the criminal procedure program at the state level. This has had the effect of making the CPCL the principal criminal procedure law applicable in those territories until the ACJO was instituted to become the ACJL in those states. States which still use the CPCL in two vouchers, which is actually attempting to institute the ACJO at this level. Sokoto, Kedi, Niger State, Bonfire State, Sena State, Yobe State, Bono State, Bombay State, and Salaba State. The history of the criminal procedure law in southern Nigeria is the first part of the Gold Coast Criminal Procedure Ordinance of 2006, which was originally enacted in the middle of the part of the colony of the Gold Coast. Following the amalgamation of northern and southern Nigeria, the government of the Nigeria sought to encourage the criminal procedure laws of both regions through a consolidated ordinance under the Nigeria Criminal Procedure Ordinance of 2014. This law was subsequently revised. This led to the passage of the Criminal Procedure Act in 1945 that applied all of Nigeria. However, due to its incompatibility with the more deprived religion of Northern Nigeria, in 1968, its scope of application was restricted to Southern Nigeria. Southern Nigerian states then demonstrated that it became the CPL. That's at the state level, instead of the CPA, which applies at the federal level. By virtue of the now repealed section 3 of the Federal High Court Act, the CPA used to apply the proceedings at the Federal High Court and made it important to mark it. In C section 493 of the ACJA, we can scale the CPA, making the ACJA a current procedural criminal legislation in force at the federal level and indeed all federal courts. That brings us to the end of principal sources of criminal law and criminal legislation. Our first second resource is the 1980 Constitution. The reason why it's called the second resource is that these are sources that, although they may contain some provisions and general information, that is what their whole or sole purpose is. Let's take on the 1980 Constitution and Nigeria as a member. It feels rather strange that the Constitution is a withdrawn law or a rule that says that the foundation of the legal system can be called the second resource law. 
outstanding presentation has a number of positions that fill the criminal investigation, including the nominated to the security forms in the town of section 1 of the Roman Council, the right to life in the town of section 3, the right to personal liberty in section 35, the right to tenure in section 6, the moral prosecution in section 174 of section 1, in section 2 and 11 of section 1. The prerogative of mercy, section 175 of section 1, and 212 of subsection 1, as well as the jurisdiction of criminal courts. Our next source is criminal court act and criminal court The criminal court act. And it's still a little bit of the criminal code law of the law that are important to us. As the case may be, constitutes southern Nigeria's substantive criminal law that defines crimes and punishments. Basically, criminalizes offenses considered to be improper conduct in southern Nigeria. Next thing we saw is the Penal Code Act of Criminal Code Laws. This is Northern Nigeria's equivalent of the Criminal Code Act of Criminal Code Laws. According to the book, the Penal Code of Northern Nigeria and the Sudan by Alan Gledwell, so that is this in the article, the Penal Code Act in use in Northern Nigeria was enacted in 1959. It came into effect in 1960. It was based on the Penal Code of the Sudan, enacted in 1990, which in turn is based on the Indian Penal Code drafted by Lord Macaulay between 1833 and 1857 and brought into force in 1960. Until then, substantive criminal law in Northern Nigeria was based on the Nigerian Penal Code of 1960. Inaugurated by the law of Nicaragua following the Marguerite. The Penal Code Act provided offenses considered to be improper conduct in Northern Nigeria. <coughs> Our next secondary source is the Evidence Act. The law of evidence is relevant to criminal investigation because it governs how both sides will divide the prosecution, the prosecution will defend, to prove the facts they intend to rely on in the course of the criminal proceedings. It deals with the quantity, quality, and even the type of proof necessary to establish one's version of events in court. With respect to criminal litigation, the style of evidence required of the prosecution is evident beyond all reasonable doubt. Unlike in civil litigation, where the style of evidence required of the claimant to succeed, which is a preponderance of evidence. Our next type of is known as secondary acts, secondary enactments. These will include the Police Act, the Armed Forces Disciplinary Proceedings, Special Provisions Act, Coroner's Act and Coroner's Laws of the Respective States, Children and Young Persons Act and Laws of the Respective States, Supreme Court Act and Supreme Court Rules, Court of Appeal Act and Court of Appeal Rules, Federal High Court Act and Federal High Court Rules, High Court Law as well as Magistrate Court Law. The list continues to include the Independent Corrupt Actors and Other Legal Defenses Act, the Dancy Court and Other Court Legal Defenses Act, the Donald Trump Defenses Act, the Court of Public Property Special Provisions Act, Firearms Act, 
robbery and fire and special prevention act, public order act, terrorism prevention act, money laundering prohibition act, so like the money laundering prohibition and the act, cyber crimes prohibition and prevention act. With that, we have concluded with the secondary sources. We now move on to the future What do you mean by future resources? English procedure and structure. The Nigerian criminal procedure was spelled to make condition for the procedure for handling a certain type of criminal matter. Or the Nigerian criminal procedure laws make provision for the procedure for handling a certain type of criminal matter. It failed to state the conditions for applying such provisions. Then, in the first scenario, if the jurisdiction is the Southern Nigerian state that has not been instituted with ACGA, then Section 363 of the CPR shall apply in each state that the procedure and practice for the time being in court and the high court of justice in England in the criminal trial shall apply to trials in the high court insofar as this act has not specifically made provision then. Scenario 2. If the provision is made, then Section 266 of the ACGA applies to each state that the court shall adopt such procedures as will in its view be substantial justice between the parties concerned. Scenario 3. If the decision is the FCC of federal courts, wherever situated, then Section 492 of Section 3 of the ACGA applies to each state. When there are no express provisions in this act, the court will apply any procedure that will meet the justice of the case. Scenario number four. If the jurisdiction is the Northern Nigerian state that has not been instituted the ACGA, then the CPCR applies in Section 35 of the High Court Law of Northern Nigeria in the case. In the reception of and lines of the rules of practice and procedure, Expressly in practice, Northern courts will do what to determine that constitutes substantial, in, substantial justice to the parties involved. There is a case related to this, and it's a charge in this case, in which was held that in their application in the High Court, in the absence of particular directions, was by summons or by motion. Like in the South, where in their application, is by summons or motion. So, an alternative classification scheme is hereby proposed. In this classification scheme, there are basically two types of law. There is substantive law, and there is procedural law. Substantive criminal law defines crimes and punishments. Procedural criminal law is the set of procedures for making criminal law via precedence, administering criminal law as codified in statutes, as well as enforcing criminal law. To better understand this classification scheme, let's study the history of criminal legislation in Nigeria. Basically, 
The English handed over to Nigeria two kinds of criminal legislation. Substantive criminal legislation and procedural criminal legislation. Let's take a look at the substantive criminal legislation first. First of all, we had the Criminal Code of Northern Nigeria of 1904 for the North. Unfortunately, there was no equivalent for the South. Not until following amalgamation, when Lord Lugar passed into law the Nigerian Criminal Code of 1916 for all of Nigeria, that's both the Northern Nigeria and Southern Nigeria. Following independence, we then have the Northern Nigerian Penal Code of 1960, or the Penal Code for short, and then Southern Nigeria had the Criminal Code Act. We are now done with substantive um, criminal legislation. Moving on to the procedural criminal legislation. It all began with the Criminal Procedure Ordinance of 1876, which was enacted in 1903 in the South, and H. C. Golan's Criminal Procedure Proclamation of 1903 in the North. Following the amalgamation, we had a consolidating ordinance known as the Nigerian Criminal Procedure Ordinance of 1914. Subsequently, Northern Nigeria adopted the Criminal Procedure Code, while Southern Nigeria went with the Criminal Procedure Act. Now we have the ACJA for all of Nigeria at the federal level and for the FCT, and the ACJL at the state level for states that have domesticated the federal legislation. However, since not all states have domesticated it, some states still have procedural laws based off and what I mean by based off is that those laws are reenactments of the CPC or the CPA, depending of course on whether the state is in the north or the state is in the south. You may have observed that we have included the Evidence Act under procedural criminal legislation. And that's because Miriam Webster's dictionary defines adjectival law as the portion of the law that deals with the rules of procedure governing evidence, pleadings, and practice. According to another legal source which we consulted, adjectival law pertains to and prescribes the practice, the method, the procedure, or legal machinery by which substantive law is enforced or made effective. In short, it prescribes the procedure for obtaining a decision according to substantive law. Modern jurists now prefer to use the term procedural law instead of adjectival law. So that's the, the correlation to the relationship between adjectival law and procedural law. Just as adjectives describe or modify nouns or pronouns, Adjectival law modifies how substantive law is enforced or made effective. In fact, the role that the Evidence Act plays is trying to create a level playing ground for the prosecution and the defense in the criminal case. So it amends the procedure or affects the procedure. Our third source is English procedural criminal legislation. We already treated this when we treated the other classification type. So the whatever we said there applies here with equal force. It's just that this is a different way of looking at the classification of the sources of criminal litigation. Let's take a look at the laws and rules applicable to criminal litigation in the various parts of Nigeria.
In Northern Nigeria, we have the 1999 Constitution as amended. The Administration of Criminal Justice Law, ACJL, if the ACJA has been domesticated, or the Criminal Procedure Code Law, CPCL, if the ACJA hasn't been domesticated, the procedural rules of the respective courts in the various northern states, the magistrate court laws of the respective northern states, subject matter specific criminal laws, as well as offender type specific criminal laws, such as the young, the children and young persons acts and laws of the respective states. For Southern Nigeria, we have a 1989 constitution as amended. The administration of criminal justice law, if the ACJA has been domesticated, or the criminal procedure law, CPL, if the ACJA hasn't been domesticated, the procedural rules of the respective courts in the various southern states, magistrate court laws of the respective states, subject matter specific criminal laws, and offender type specific criminal laws, such as the children and young persons laws of the respective states. And for all of Nigeria, we have the 1999 Constitution as amended, the Armed Forces Act, the Federal High Court Act and Rules, the Court of Appeal Court Act and Rules, the Supreme Court Act and Rules, as well as the ACJA. Let's take a look at the laws and rules applicable to criminal litigation in various courts in Nigeria. Federal courts first. In the federal court, we have the 1999 constitution as amended. The statutes establishing the courts, such as the Federal High Court Act, the Court of Appeal Act, the Supreme Court Act, etc. You also have the procedural rules guiding the operations of the respective federal courts. For state courts in, the, in Northern Nigeria, we have the 1999 Constitution as amended. The procedural rules guiding the operations of the respective northern courts, either the ACGL if domesticated, or the CPCL if not if the ACGL JA has not been domesticated, the magistrate court laws of those states, and finally, for the state courts in southern Nigeria, we have the 1999 constitution as amended, the procedural rules guiding the operation of the respective southern states, either the ACGL if the state has domesticated the same, or the CPL if the ACGA wasn't domesticated, and then the magistrate court laws of those states. So we now have our take-home assignment, comparing and contrasting the laws and rules applicable to various courts in Nigeria. Basically, there are two, a minimum of two laws that are applicable to criminal legislation or litigation in the various courts on the screen. The question is, what two laws regulate procedure at the Federal High Court? What two laws regulate procedure at the AFCT High Court? What two laws regulate procedure at the various state high courts? What two laws regulate procedure at magistrate courts? What two laws regulate procedure at a court martial? So that's our take-home assignment. If you have followed the lecture so far, it should not be an impossible task to fulfill. With that, we are done with part two of this 
lecture.